afternoon, South Africa, and a very warm welcome to you. My name is Jeannie Deed. Now, today is going to rock in every sense of the word. We have one of the most successful South African rock bands right here in our loft, and they are going to be doing one of the most insane performances. We're celebrating 10 years of their last album that they uh, released. Their name is... F of Police Car. <laughs> Welcome indeed. I'm Bonnie Bully, and I hope your week's going much better now that Monday is over. Okay. Today on Winner Home and Afternoon Express, we check out our contestants' lounge designs and see how they're doing with that. And uh, Police Car is one of the most successful South African rock bands ever. And since their beginning in the early 2000s, they've changed the local rock scene, pushed cultural boundaries, and created a lot of angry parents. <laughs> to celebrate the 10th year anniversary of their last full length album, Swana Song, the band re-released it on a collector's edition vinyl to celebrate a long and illustrious career. This is Polisica. <gasps> Guys, welcome to our loft. So happy to have the entire band with us today. <laughs> so I want to know, apparently you guys got together as kind of a mistake, a kind of a joke. It Is was that a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting right here, biggest mistake of our career. <laughs> Where did you meet? How did it all come together? No, it, was, it was definitely a joke starting an Afrikaans band. I think at that stage, yeah. There wasn't really anything that we wanted to listen to in Afrikaans music, and we were always joking about starting an Afrikaans band. We thought it was funny, ha ha. Yeah. And then we came up with a name, and that was a good reason to actually start the thing. Yeah. Why that um, name specifically? I've always wanted to ask uh, you this. It was, a, it was a stoner <laughs> moment. Was it a stoner <laughs> yeah. moment? It was actually for or familie moote. That is what, that's what Francois uh, a car drove in front of us, and Francois said, Fuck off, family motor. And I said, that, that sounds great. <laughs> Was it a great. station wagon full of <laughs> yeah, mom, like, dad, kids? Like that. then, probably. Were they on their I way to remember. church? Something like that. <laughs> but, I mean, I said to Francois, that's a great name. And then we told Hunter about it, and a few days later, Hunter said, what's the name again? Is it Fuck off, police car? And we were like, brilliant. Let's oh, it's even better. <laughs> <laughs> Have you dealt with your road rage issues since then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it was rage, really. It was just a, <laughs> just an outlet. <laughs> yeah. But you guys were really ahead of your time almost because I think it was it seemed quite controversial when you first banned it and then parents were hating it but the youth were just absolutely obsessed with you guys. Do you think that you really did push the envelope a lot or do you think it was really just and welcome? Uh, I think the main thing was that we felt a certain way and starting the band was a kind of escape for us. Yeah. And then by accident uh, we realised a lot of people do feel the same. Mm. And uh, that's kind of how it all happened. Uh, we didn't sit down and say, listen, yeah, we need to be a voice for a generation yeah. or a voice for a certain kind of people, you know. Um, we were just kind of living our lives and trying to do something that we think were different or funny. Yeah, I think we, we just really wanted to make music for ourselves first and foremost. Yeah, yeah. And it was kind of amazing that a lot of people could relate. Yeah. I mean, I mean afterwards you, you we realised people are feeling the same. Yeah. yeah. Not I just mean, the five of us and our ten other stoner friends. Right. <laughs> you made newspaper headlines, people describing you as anti-God. Is that true or were you just misunderstood? And what was your message? Um, yeah, I think that there was obviously a lot of con controversy um, about one thing, uh, one specific Were you specific making a statement incident. about the church, about uh, no, church no, not culture? At all. No, or? no, no. Uh, we were, you know, we were, we were young. We were living in a bubble in our van, traveling the country, yeah. saying whatever we want, and then it kind of came out in a weird way. You know, uh, one of well, us. Well, well, it came out in the early morning hours in a in a bar in a kind of a drunken situation in a, in a small town. But but then that was taken out of context. <laughs> context, and right. it was made as if it was a statement. Yeah. For the general public. 
or that you guys like, as would. a band, yeah. Okay, and so that was kind of where the controversy for us came in, all the the misunderstanding. Yeah. Um, and then you know, uh, being folk of Polisikar, being three or four years into our career, I think a lot of Afrikaans people, just people in general, conservative people, were waiting for something to go. Aha! I told you. And yeah, so here yeah, they had that excuse. Right. And then it just were roller coaster ride. Yeah. What but was the worst thing you heard about yourselves? Um, that you were like, what? When did we like get here? How did this happen? And, uh, okay. <laughs> no, we have a, a, a weird story that, that I heard about me and Vainand was that we were in a, in a backstage room and, and, and he injected me with cortisone in my neck. Wow. Which is absolutely not true. And the person that said that is completely convinced that, that it happened. <laughs> Years down the line. Oh, There's actually a documentary out, forgive them for that, do not know what they do which right. is uh, up to now many years ago. Um, it's actually on YouTube now, people want to check it out, but that kind of tells our whole story. It's an hour and 50 minutes, but um, in that thing, there's a few weird yeah. uh, fans <laughs> interviewed and things that they believe happened. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, I mean, with good reason. I mean, when you guys perform, you, you were wild. And it was amazing, high energy. But, I mean, you guys were quite badly behaved. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Considering we... how you are now, I think you've all grown up. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, I mean, obviously, that. I mean, for us, that was just uh, normal behaviour. Yeah. You know, like, we no. didn't go out to, 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 like, behave badly and do extreme stuff, you know, it just kind of happened. Yeah. And I think obviously being in a band and being on the road and, and getting some kind of success or interest, you know, kind of fuel it yeah. even more without you realizing. You yeah. only realize after your drummer's jumped out of the van and broken his arm into pieces, then you realize, oh, you know, maybe, 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 we maybe it's a bit extreme. <laughs> now, 10 years later, I can tell you we were very extreme. Yeah. I realize people don't really party that way that we used to. And yeah. what did this mean? I know parents out there are wondering, like, what did your parents go through? What did this Who's mean for your parents? For, 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 for <laughs> these questions. She's another. I'm the mother. I, I can and tell I've you, got two who's boys. Who's on the other side? I can tell you. I've got two I can, boys, I can and tell I'm you just about like. my parents. My, my dad is a yeah. Dutch Reformed minister. And oh man! I, I didn't want to tell my, my folks the name of the band because yeah, I knew it yeah. would upset them. And then I think my cousin, my cousin's mom, told them that I'm in this band called Folk of Police. And my mom <laughs> cried for two days. <laughs> so that was like before she even heard the lyrics on our first album. So but not it was because, extreme at, at, at yeah. that stage. But not because. It says, fuck off to a police car. <laughs> because there's a swear word in the name. I guess. Don't you think that's just far out? And also that they finally found out you were swearing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But now you're about to become a father. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, we actually have two dads in the band. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks. So, I mean, how would you respond if your kids come out and say, listen, Dad, we're going to be, we're going to be rock stars? Um, yeah. I would say I'd rather play rugby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's not the way some rugby players. Well, that's, that, that's Francois's <laughs> second option or exactly. fantasy. Yeah, that's my, yeah. still my fantasy that I can okay. make my comeback one day. Yeah. Well, look, you guys were so hugely successful with the band, and then kind of I don't think you split. You more like diversified because from there we got a King, Hevels Fantastis, Van Gogh Cartel. I mean, that was through one band, cre you know, stemmed so many other things. That what are you guys all doing now? Well, first of all, that kind of happened by accident. Uh, you know, the end, accident. ten years ago, the end of two thousand and six, <laughs> we were, we were kind of over it. Yeah. it. You know, it was it was a heavy three years. It took a lot of toll on us. A lot of stuff happened in two thousand and six, and we actually decided to take a break from the band. And at that stage, we weren't sure if we will ever get together again. Yeah. But we didn't break up. We were going to take a bit of a break. August 20, 2007, we were back together again and started playing. Yeah. And that was actually that break made the biggest change possibly. But I mean, I've, I've always been involved in the management of Fokov Polisikar. And, yeah. You're managing um, Jack Perrin as yes, well, Yes, yes, yes. So, I mean, I've... You must be I've, a good manager. Yeah, I'm very good. Yes. <laughs> um, so, I mean, so, it's come down to, um, you know, I've, I like to develop brands and music brands and work with that kind yeah. of stuff. Franch has obviously got his solo career as Franch and Coke. Johnny's got a studio called Soft Light City. Best mm. studio in town if you want jingles mm. or whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And um, <laughs> Hunter's in the uh, Yevos Fantastis, he writes yeah. music for various people. And Snake, I'm not sure what he does. He's suicidal. Don't, don't jump out He's of any cars. He's got a caddy, so I think he does something in deliveries or... <laughs> so we're so excited that you've now taken Swana Song and you've put it into vinyl. We're going to be chatting about that a little bit later, so don't go anyway. Now, don't forget that Police Card will be performing in full rock mode later on the show. And it's definitely going to be the loudest and most energetic performance that we've ever had on Afternoon Express. And we've also got a very exciting giveaway to announce as well. So stay tuned. 
Welcome back to Afternoon Express, and we're just about to get started in the kitchen. Remember, F of Police Car is in the loft today, and they're going to be performing a little bit later. But in the kitchen first, Clem, I have to tell you, what is the last thing a girl ever wants to hear? Um, um, I don't know. I'm thinking of so many okay, things. I'll tell you. We're going Dutch, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Except when it's got to do with pancakes. It is. It's called a Dutch baby pancake. Okay, so... so it's not really known, yeah. but do you know what? Pofferkies. It's like these little this batter you pour in these cast iron things and they puff up like little mini Dutch pancakes. Okay. okay. No, never this heard is of a the big one, but it's still called babies, right? So okay. it's pretty simple, so I think we should get straight into it. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is some eggs. Free okay. range always. Always. Right? Of course. Free raising to the mixer. Mm-hmm. And then I'm gonna go with some butter. This is, no, no, no. Let's not even do butter. Some flour. Oh, okay. And um, I'm not, to guess not what something. else Just... you may want. <laughs> and then some milk. Yeah. And actually, that's all you need for this pancake mixture. But we're gonna add a little extra flavor. Okay. We're gonna use some vanilla extract. Mm -hmm. And you always try to use extract instead of essence. We all spoke about that before. Always. So in your fancy machine, <laughs> or you can do it by hand. You wanna do it by hand. I know. No, thank you. no, cool. <laughs> Let the machine do all the work. <laughs> exactly. And just bring it all together like a nice batter, which is really great. Maybe I shouldn't talk while the thing's running. Okay. So maybe the, everyone else is can it hear. done already? Yes, it is. <laughs> so what's really great is you, you make this, and the longer it sits, the better mixture you're actually going to end up getting because the flour absorbs all the liquid, and you get a like nice, smooth, perfect pancake mixture. Fantastic. So this guy. You keep it on the side over here so long, yeah. it's done. So we're going to pop it in the fridge. You can actually keep it in the fridge for three days. Oh, really? So you got so such... So again, the longer the better. So longer the better. Cook it on day three. And also, <laughs> when you like just spontaneously want a Dutch baby pancake, because you're going to want it after watching this today. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we're going to make our curd to go with it. Normally, it's a lemon curd. But today, we're using this guy. Okay. You know what Nectarine, it is? Nectarine, Nachi, no, Clementine. No. A Clem. <laughs> it's not, no, not just a Clementine. Oh. It's a Clem and Gold. Okay. Yeah. They're really sweet. <laughs> An Olympic Clem. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to make a curd out of that. To start with that, I've got a heavy base pot. What is a curd? Is a curd like a mustard? Um, no. Not a mustard, a custard. It's like a custard, okay. in a sense. Okay. Kind of, we like to use fruit juices to, to kind of bring it all together. Yeah. So what I do is, starting on a very low heat, mm -hmm. you can do this over a double boiler. That's when you've got simmering water and a bowl. Exactly. But we've advanced now, so we can take it to the next level. We're going to do it straight into the pot. Okay. okay. So very low heat, some butter. butter, ovs, that goes in, and then the three egg yolks. Okay. Can you pass me the whisk? Because now you're going to get busy, right? Now you're going to keep an eye on it. Okay. That's going to go in, and the cream and gold juice. There we go. Okay. And that's going to go in. And what you're going to do now, you're going to start stirring. So what happens is that word I couldn't say yesterday, emulsify. Yeah. The butter and the eggs are going to start emulsifying, and it's going to come together like a custard. It smells like a custard, it actually. It does. So you're going to keep on going, keep on going, and make sure you don't let it scramble. And that happens because you're not keeping an eye on it, you're not stirring. It okay. takes a bit of effort, but you know what? It's, it's well worth it. Okay. And the curd keeps for, I'm not joking, I've met people that have had curds for like almost 10 years. No, no, no. If this is as delicious as I think it's going to be, it's not going to last. my house in about, for about two days. It's not going to last. So you're going to keep on stirring, keep an eye on it. And eventually it's going to come together, make a beautiful, thick, notchy mm. curd. What I like to do is, because I said the lemon golds are quite sweet, cut through that sweetness with a little bit of lemon juice and lemon zest. Okay. Just to balance out the sweetness. No. So now, you see we've got a pan over here that's already been smoking. Yeah. I'm just going to... Get my flame back out and move it back to the center so everybody can see. Mm -hmm. Dutch, baby, Dutch baby pancakes traditionally have to be cooked in like cast iron pan. So if you've got one over here, but if you don't have one at home, don't worry, you can just use a normal pan. Okay. You'll be safe. So the bat is made. And remember, this is the one we made three days ago already. <laughs> cool. Fast forward in TV land. I'm going to take some butter. You can see that's really hot. Get mm -hmm. that in there. And Does now, it have to be that hot? The hotter um, the better. The hotter the better. kind of situation. So you, Pour your batter in, mm -hmm. and now uh, you're going to tell everyone where they can find this recipe while I get this to the oven. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Remember, all of our recipes are available on afternoonexpress.co.za. We've got all of the recipes and shopping lists, you name it. We're going Dutch today, baby, we right? Are. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So what's going to happen is that's gone to the oven, and you have to be very careful. Clear all the kids out of the kitchen, yeah. run to the oven, whack the guy in the oven, it's going to look like nothing's happening. In the yeah. last five minutes, it's going to pop up like a Yorkshire pudding. Like a poppadom. 
Yeah, worry yeah, about it. okay, okay. <laughs> that works as well. Let's cross over to Bonnie now. Now, the Revlon Love Squad are the ultimate team of beauty bloggers headed up by brand ambassador Bonang Mateba. These beauty gurus have been handpicked by Revlon SA to share their love tips and makeup tricks right here on Afternoon Express every week. So stay tuned for more from South Africa's top beauty bloggers after the break. Welcome back. Now, we're all a little loved up thanks to the Revlon Love Squad spreading the good vibes and sharing their makeup wisdom with us every week. Today, our own Wanang Mateba shares her tips on how to keep those love fires humming. One of the most important things about love, once you have found it, you need to keep it alive it's like a little child so you know i i really believe in um introducing some spontaneity into the relationship some uh you know weird and wonderful things things that you wouldn't necessarily do maybe go skiing maybe go to a lion park here and there uh do some romantic things for your partner an impromptu dinner spoil them some rose petals on the floor if you know your guy loves um football I know, get it, get into a football, you know, jersey and <laughs> off to the stadium you go. It's just about, you know, um, creating the fun, maintaining the fun and making sure that you're not too complacent and you're not too comfortable in your relationship. You need to keep the fire burning. Bonang and the Revlon Love Squad will be sharing their love tips and makeup tricks right here on Afternoon Express every Tuesday and Thursday. So don't miss the Beauty 101. For more updates, follow their campaign online. Hashtag Love Squad essay Love is on. Let's see how those baby pancakes are coming in the kitchen. Well, Bonang was right because falling in love is amazing. I would know this because I've just fallen in love with a Dutch baby pancake. Aww. <laughs> How yummy does this look? It looks so cool. It looks really cool. It's quite cakey. It is. It's kind of a cross between a, a, like a dense pancake and a bit of a cake. It actually looks a bit like, do you know those Madeira cakes? I would know I'm from Madeira. But, but it looks <laughs> I mean, like Madeira cake. About. But it's just a lot higher. It is. How's our curd coming okay, along? So I'm pleased the, to see that you're still stirring so uh, that it doesn't turn out to be egg. So the eggs and the butter have mixed together nicely with the mm -hmm. juice. Now I need my salati caster um, cast snow. There we go. If you could just pour, pour that What's all in for me. What's the difference between caster snow and icing snow? Should you can I see the this? texture. Uh, and I grab some. Put some in my hand. Okay. You see, so caster snow is quite fine. Yeah. But the icing snow is really like a powder. Okay. You know what I mean? And that's... What that's do you the do? difference. That's good. You can pour it all in. Oh. There we go. I'm doing it like in stages so that it doesn't get clumpy. Look at you knowing how to yeah, do it. Yeah, nobody likes so, clumpy anything. <laughs> that mm. all mixes together. And okay. I swear by like another two minutes we'll have a nice curd. So I'm going to turn this off because I've got one made already. Oh, Oz. Okay. This looks amazing. It is. You want to try tasting it? Um, can I? Yeah. I'd love to. I actually. like how polite you're being and you used a spoon. I was going to use my fingers, but I'm just I'm a little bit aware of the audience. How yummy is that? I could eat it just like this, like I a little butternut know. soup. It's so, <laughs> so sweet, it's very rich, but it's delicious. Cool. Mm. So now, it is yummy. You know what this is great on? That French is so toast, good. waffles, anything. Anything, yeah. anything, anything. That's so, so good. What I've done before, and I don't know, like, I want to actually put this out there. I've made it just like this, and I've actually frozen them whole. Okay. And that's kind of it. But when you when you uh, reheat them after you've frozen, does it still have that same kind of fluffiness? It does, but you have to get your oven screaming hot, whack it in there five minutes later, poof. Okay. It's done. Happiness. Okay, good. So all you got to do is this amazing curd now goes into mm -hmm. a jar that's airtight, and yeah. it will keep forever. Oh, yes. Tupperware. I've had, I've, I'm going to keep Tupperware forever. No, not Tupperware. Just look at the curd. Okay. <laughs> not Tupperware, glass jar. <laughs> okay, there glass we go. jar. So all you're going to do is you're going to just drizzle it over. Ooh. And then spread it a bit. Yeah. And what I've got... Oh, actually, I can go for more. What I've got is some creme fraiche. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but I absolutely love creme fraiche in also almost everybody everything. Everybody loves creme fraiche. And the reason for that is, again, we've got a lot of eggs and sugar in there and that citrus fruit in there. Mm-hmm. The cream fresh just cuts through all of that. Yeah, it needs it. So it's kind of like that. I mean, you're feeding a Ooh. lot of guys today, so I'm going to have to make another one. Yeah, you're going to have to make a few. <laughs> How's it look? Oh, I cannot wait to taste that. It's so good. Yeah. yeah last thing. No, almost, not, almost lost. Okay. I've got some fresh 
Clement Gold Zest. Zest. And that's just gonna, again, cut through all that richness. Yeah. And because it's not sweet enough, <laughs> it is pretty sweet. Salati cast the snow one there. Can oh, you? there it is. Look at you. There we go. <laughs> and the sip. Okay. Oh, and we're going to be real chefy, right? We're going to go from a high. Yeah. Go very chefy. Very chefy. Somebody just tweeted saying that I look very uncomfortable in the kitchen. No way. You're a pro. <laughs> that You're must a be pro. a new viewer. Because <laughs> I really am very uncomfortable in the kitchen. <laughs> what do you think? Look at that. Oh my goodness, it's snowing. And I like I've made a mess everywhere. I love it. Cool. So all you've got to do is when you're serving it to your guests, you can either just take this to your bedroom and chow. Yeah. Or what I like to do, I like to cut to it your like bedroom a and chow. Yeah. You've got to do this behind closed doors if you can eat the whole thing. Yeah. So I just like to cut it. Like a pizza. Like a pizza. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That, oh, how was that goo when it pulled away? That is stunning. <laughs> it's a Thank moment. you, Clem. <laughs> it's a Clementine Gold Baby Dutch Pancake. So remember, you too can get the recipe and all of the details for this fantastic yumminess on afternoonexpress.co.za. Now, don't forget, we've got Policy Card coming up live later in the show, and we have that giveaway to announce as well. But after the break, it's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express. So stay right where you are. Now, give me a five seconds. Win at home on Afternoon Express, where three design contestants are turning three empty properties at Valdivia Estate State in the Cape Winelands into dream homes using finishes provided by Caesarstone and Plascon. Vote for your favourite and you could win. The furniture pieces in a lounge can really make or break the whole room from a design perspective. Oka Interiors in Cape Town sets a new standard in the world of interior design with a distinctive and personal style that epitomizes African luxury. We visited them to learn more about what makes a unique furniture design. Oak and Arc are under the same Toyota umbrella. Toyota is an internationally acclaimed architecture firm and they had a vision that they needed a in-house interior design architecture firm. Arc spaces are very luxurious and Oka's furniture is as well. We pride ourselves in our furniture being something that can resemble a luxurious, elegant and a beautiful piece that can fit into basically any interior space. And because our designs are so timeless, our furniture works well with Arc's design spaces. You'll notice that all Oka's furniture, there's an undertone of modernism. That is what we try and include in all of our furniture pieces. It's the type of woods we use, the leather, the upholstery, the detailing such as the stitching, the stains on the wood, um, and the craftsmanship of our furniture. All our pieces are handcrafted, and each piece has about two workers working on them. The same two workers will basically make the same chair every time. So that quality is not wavered, that it always has the unique appeal, the stitching detail that the seamstress has worked on is done by master seamstresses. The craftsmanship is portrayed in our upholstery as well as our timber bases that's also been done. The current trends when it comes to lounge furniture, people are going towards simplicity. What people want is to get a contemporary space but still have that African style. Colors that they use are very African inspired, but then this is offset with the simplicity of the furniture that's used. So instead of using a very busy furniture piece, if I could put it like that, very ornate, and still having a bright color on it, we'd rather use a simple furniture piece and just accent it with a different color. Jeanne has chosen an STM chair. The STM chair is one of our classics. It's basically a broad wide chair that allows you to just sit in the chair and be encapsulated by the chair. She chose to go with a black leather and offset that with a walnut wishbone arm finish. This wishbone arm has quite a bit of finesse to it and a bit of feminism to it, which suits her, being the only female in the competition. You'll see the craftsmanship of the wishbone detail. It's just beautiful. The walnut works well with the black leather that she's gone for. The gentlemen have chosen another variety of our STM chair. We've got three different varieties. There's the angled, the full arm, and the wishbone. They've gone for the full arm. This has a stronger detail to the STM chair, and they've both decided to go with white leather. They've got the swivel base, which has a strong masculine feel to it because it's black and it's got the metal element. And the woods that they've chosen, Manenshli has gone with a walnut, whereas Rudolph has gone with a whitewashed oak. 
they both offset the white leather quite perfectly. With the swivel base that the gentlemen have chosen, it allows you to just sway in the chair, just to provide some form of movement. And when you're at home and you're just sitting and just relaxing, you just want to enjoy the chair and just sit and stay and read a book. Now, there are only a few days left for our three design contestants to complete their final room, the lounge. So let's meet up with Danilo at Valdivy to see how they're coming along. I mean, Nantle, this looks like a construction site, but it all looks like it's just about to explode. Yeah, uh, my friend just, just came in, so I'm happy about that. But I still need uh, to finish up some touch-ups with the painting. And then it's just placing the furniture where it needs to go and hopefully everything comes up to the vision that I have. What is the grand vision and theme and ideas behind this room? My theme for the lounge is the modern African aesthetic, which I'm bringing in with Debele patterns on my geometric frames for my coffee table that are collaborated with Sianda which are in contrast with the Caesar stone top, which is very organic. I'm trying to find a balance between the contemporary and the traditional African styles bring them together to achieve a modern African aesthetic. Nice ideas, but what is the wow factor in the lounge? What I'm really excited about is the, my collaborations, the coffee table, and especially the dining table, which I call a 4 to 6 table, simply because it comes in as a four-seater, then it expands to a six-seater to accommodate more people. So I think the judges are really going to like its versatility and its innovativeness, whether you want to host uh, more guests or it's just you and your family. Well, whether it's going to be big or small parties, make sure there's an extra chair in the corner somewhere because I will be at those parties, okay? Definitely. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Rudolph, I'm excited to unpack some of your ideas. They usually say it's the calm before the storm. This looks like the storm before the calm. Well, it's what you can expect in a renovation like this. Um, at the back, they're still busy with the TV unit. They're almost done with that. And I'm quite excited to see the blinds going up soon. What's going to be the wow factor in this space? Most definitely the sliding screen on the TV unit. It was inspired by the Cape Fainbos and it's something really interesting and that's also repeated in the artwork above here. The moving panel sounds really interesting. Tell me more about it. So Teresa V, the graphic designer, actually designed this beautiful artwork and that was seen seed on leather and that was stretched <laughs> over this frame that's going to be the screen for the TV unit. I want to find out a little bit about your soul. What do you think is the most important part of a lounge? Well, a lounge is really a space where you want to feel comfortable. So mm -hmm. you need to create that cocoon effect. And you can do that by the use of colors, the, the layering of different materials and textures, and also lighting is very important. Well, speaking of cocoons, I hope this transforms into a beautiful butterfly. Spread your wings. Thank, Thank you. you. I will do. <laughs> Shwane, compared to the other two apartments, this looks pretty empty at the moment. Is this another minimalist piece for you? Not quite. I have a few items that I'm missing. I'm still waiting for my entertainer and TV and mm. lamp in the corner. Then we have a last piece coming up. Um, it's a sculpture that's going to bring everything together. It's going to be at the entrance of the, of the apartment. I feel like I don't need to ask you what the wow piece in this room is going to be because this is just wow. Yes. I love this piece, it's very unique. The artists that worked on this, they are students from, from Cape Town. And I briefed them to create a centerpiece for my apartment that would bring all of my colors together and then also just liven up the space and give it the energy it needs. Talk me through the inspiration behind all these different shapes. The shapes were inspired by butterfly wings. So when you look up at it, you see these abstract figures and shapes and it just takes you to another wonderland. What are the other wow factors going to be in this space here? I really love this table that Il Toro designed for me. We collaborated on this piece and it just brings something masculine to the space. It also reflects the beautiful chandelier in the glass. And then these walnut chairs from Guideline are just immaculate. What are you hoping the judges will see and say when they walk into your living room? I think they're really going to appreciate the details I designed for the space. Well, I think they're going to love your hanging centerpiece and I'm not going to leave you hanging any longer. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Get back to work. Now, while our design contestants work around the clock to get done in time, it's time for our weekly property chat with our finance expert from Nedbank. Bonnie's on the couch with him now. Buying a home is one of the most important steps in your life, whether it's your first home or an upgrade. Therefore, being informed on some of the extra costs involved over and above the purchase price can make a huge difference and make your home buying experience much easier. We're joined by Tim Akinusi, Head of Sales and Client Management at Nedbank Home Loans. Welcome to The Love, Tim. 
Thank you, Wani. So, Tim, what other extra costs do buyers need to be aware of uh, over and above the purchase price? So, Bonnie, one of the common mistakes that consumers make is they only consider the cost of the bond and the affordability and not the extra cost that we are going to talk, talk about today. And the extra cost is really the cost of acquisition as well as the cost of maintenance. Now, the cost of acquisition is the cost that you would incur to have the property transferred into your name. So there are lawyers involved, so you'd need to pay the registration costs mm -hmm. for your property to be registered at the deeds office. You would also need to pay the initiation fee to the bank for them to set up the accounts for you and to maintain the account. Okay. And uh, thirdly, you have to pay transfer costs, which is in essence a tax to, to the government. So the first 750,000 Rand of the property value is exempt from that tax, and the balance in that you pay transfer duties on. Mm. If you are building a new place or buying um, a house that is being built by a developer, those costs are either voided or um, inclusive in the price of um, the, the entire unit. Yeah. Then the second cost around the maintenance. Now that's the interesting one because that's an ongoing cost that you pay as long as you continue to have the house and live in it. So that's your cost of your levies if you're in a sectional title, mm -hmm. which is um, comprises of your maintenance costs in the garden, the security you pay, and some insurance. Yeah. Then the other cost is your rates and taxes. In a standalone situation, you'd be paying your rates and taxes, and obviously you then have the flexibility on what to pay for security and the cost of gardening, et cetera. Yeah. So those are the two main costs that you need to contend with. Um, as long as you are uh, a, a, a homeowner, you'd always have those two costs, and that's over and above your bond repayments. Wow. Tim, how can one calculate these costs? So, Bonnie, what we've understood over the last couple of years is that clients really battle with understanding exactly all the costs that's involved in actually maintaining and paying off their uh, monthly instalment. So we've designed a, an, an app called Instant Bond Indicator. It's on our website. Mm -hmm. And essentially, it's a 14-field application where you put in the cost of the property and your personal details mm -hmm. and we'll make a real-time scoring, um, a real-time call to credit bureaus to give you uh, a sense of your credit health as well as your affordability. And we will then play back to you results that would include not only the cost of your monthly repayments on a property, but also the cost of the transfer that you would pay and the registration that you're likely to, to be faced with. And that will give you a really good sense of exactly what cost in total you are you're expected to be in for. Wow, that sounds really helpful. I'll definitely be getting that app. Great. Thank you so much. We're very well informed. Thank you, Tim. Pleasure. Yeah. Consult your bank to make sure you fully understand all the costs associated with buying a home and that those unexpected hidden costs won't come back to haunt you. For more information, visit netbank.co.za forward slash home loans. So on the subject of voting, remember to vote for your favourite design contestants lounge on privateproperty.co.za and stand a chance to win paint from Plascon to the value of 5,000 Rand. Here's how. It's not called Win a Home for Nothing. You, the viewer, can win one of three completed apartments at Valdivia Estate, valued at more than 3 million rand, by voting for your favorite design contestants lounge on privateproperty.co.za. Win a Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with NetBank. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, as we said earlier on the show, we have an exciting giveaway today. Now, if of Police Card have released a limited edition uh, vinyl of their album, Swan a Song, and only 400 of these have been made, and today you can win one worth 400 rand. It's a bit more than that because it's signed. I'm sure we can tip that out. Yeah, front, <laughs> front your signature and then it's worth way more. <laughs> to win, all you have to do is SMS the keyword express, your name and city, to double three seven two eight right now. SMS is cost one round fifty each. T's and C's apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. But now, our loft is about to be raised to the ground with some Evo Policica. <laughs> Take it away, guys. <laughs> Ik zal mijn belofte spreken 
as jy my nette kans kan gee Wie sal vir my liefde mag Wie sal vir my liefde mag As die somer so lekker is Hoe kom voel ek so vak Who's safe for my ass, dear? Yoga, I'm sure. How was your bunny hop? <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> bunny hop. <laughs> he did this. Did you not see what he did? He hopped to that. I thought he was going to somersault over a, the drive. I did a front flip. No one saw the flip part. No. <laughs> <laughs> and Vaynard, I mean, uh, you've got to teach me how you did that because you took your hat off and then you had hat hair and then you just flipped around and then you had like this gorgeous do. <laughs> Skills, man. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got no words. I don't know. <laughs> well, well, you've definitely sung for your dessert. Yeah, oh, and dessert's that, ready. Is that a dessert pizza? What is that? No, yeah. I, it's <laughs> actually <laughs> I'm going to serve you. So it's actually a little baby Dutch pancake. Awesome. There you go. I'm quite good at this. Now. I'm glad you guys got a wow. tech rider. We all went <laughs> after, um, yeah. after the show. <laughs> well, thank you so much for you guys coming, and thank cool. you for Thanks. watching. We'll be back Thanks. again tomorrow. Nice Mwah. Good night. Happy eating. Here you go, darling. You okay, need some okay. cake. <laughs> Like them, like yeah. a deer, huh? Who's on a diet? Here's a baby one. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we take a look at a brand new South African film called My Father's War with cast members Fumani Shilubana and Stian Bam. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel good production.